I would like to say that something like that in this field of Christology is far more important to introduce believers to than the vast majority of what we do introduce new believers to, which is much more of a <coughs> um, self-help methodology type thing than it is a grounded theological understanding of who Christ is and, and so on and so forth. So impeccability uh, is the question that I, I remember in Bible college and it was in Bible college for I actually had to deal with it. I was raised in a Christian church. I had never heard anybody talk about it, at least not that I could remember. Maybe it was. I didn't understand. I don't know. Could Jesus sin? And I've told the story before. I remember, I still remember to this day when I came to a conclusion on this and I've never found any reason to doubt the conclusion I came to. But it was in D.C. Martin's Christian Doctrines class at Grand Canyon College, now Grand Canyon University. <coughs> and uh, we had discussed it in class, and I was weighing it in my mind, and some of us Bible students had gone to the bookstore. And it was in the old Grand Canyon bookstore, which I can guarantee you is not there anymore, given what they're doing to that campus. Um, it's probably a 10-story building now. Um, all of a sudden, it struck me. I had listened to the arguments. The argument being, on the one side, God cannot sin and remain God because it is a fundamental violation of his nature. But man, <laughs> if he does not have the ability to sin, is no longer man. So how could Jesus be the God-man? And just right there in the bookstore, I came to a conclusion on it, and I've never changed my mind. And the, my conclusion was that it is significantly more definitional, centrally definitional, foundationally definitional, of the nature of God to not be able to sin than it is to the nature of man to be able to sin, especially in light of the fact that we believe that someday man will be perfected in his sanctification and will no longer be subject to sin. Does that mean he ceases to have, ceases to be human? <coughs> no, it doesn't mean that he ceases to be human. So, on the definitional level, to be truly the God-man would mean that if Jesus sinned, Basically, God would cease to exist. Um, whereas Jesus being perfect in his nature and not fallen would share the same ability not to sin that we will have in glory itself. And so he truly remains human and truly God. And so I have never really found the debate to be overly scintillating because I think that's really pretty foundational to an understanding of who Christ was. 